Hello, this is Nancy Fisher Allison, and I'm here to start sharing a wonderful story with you. I'm going to be reading from a chapter book entitled, When Mischief Came to Town by Katrina Nanestad. When Mischief Came to Town is a work of historical fiction. So let's take a quick moment to think about what that means. Naturally, because it's fiction, much of it is made up. Certainly the characters are made up and the storyline is made up, but because it's historical fiction, it takes place during a real time and in a real place. The time is 1911, 109 years ago. And the place is the island of Bornholm in the country of Denmark, a little island sitting all by itself in the middle of the Baltic Sea. I know when I read historical fiction and my setting is a real place, I always like to take a look in an atlas and see exactly where that place is. Once again, our story takes place on the island of Bornholm in the country of Denmark. So here is the world as we know it with the United States in Seattle in the northwest corner and then across the Atlantic Ocean is the continent of Europe, among other continents, with the little country of Denmark noted at the tip of the red arrow. A closer look still, again, Denmark noted by the red arrow, and then Little Bornholm, an island in the Baltic Sea, marked by the green arrow. A final super close look, this time the red arrow is pointing at Copenhagen, which is the capital of Denmark, and the green arrow still pointing at the island of Bornholm, all by itself in the middle of the Baltic Sea. And now for our story, When Mischief Came to Town by Katrina Nanestad, published in 2015. When Mischief Came to Town begins with an epigraph which is a quotation that writers often put at the beginning of a book. And Katrina Nonestad chose a quotation from Hans Christian Andersen, the famous Danish writer. He wrote, Every man's life is a fairy tale, written by God's fingers. When Mischief Came to Town has 20 chapters. We will, of course, be reading all of them, and we will also read a note for readers at some point. As we get started, I would like to give you one word that may be new to you, because it is going to show up very quickly in the story, and the word is plate, which is another word for braid. So not the plate that you would eat a meal off of, but a way to fix your hair. And you can see that our main character, Inga Maria, if you look at her picture on the cover here, she has her hair in plates. I've done the same today just so that we can be very clear, what is a plate? 1911, Bornholm, Denmark, chapter one. The Grateful Goat and the Talking Spoons. Here I am, feeling sorry for myself. I'm sitting on a wooden crate, wedged between a cage full of geese and a goat. If I press too hard against the geese, they honk and peck at me. And even though my coat is too thick for it to hurt, it makes me want to cry. If I press too hard against the goat, she eats my plates. One is already 10 centimeters shorter than the other, the ribbon gone, and that makes me want to cry too. I could stand up, but the boat is rolling and tumbling so much that I would probably fall over, and the deck is covered in water and poo and fish guts. If I don't fall over, I might bump into one of the fishermen, and they are already grumpy about having a 10-year-old on their boat. They think it is bad luck to have a child on board. Even worse luck if she is a girl. I could go and sit with the old man and his seasick pig, but he might ask me why I am traveling alone all the way from Copenhagen out to the island of Bornholm, and I don't want to talk about it. That will definitely make me want to cry. I tell myself that the goat isn't so bad. She stinks, but she is friendly and doesn't seem to mind my being close. 
the softness and warmth of her rem remind me of snuggling by the fire with Mama, listening as she reads my favorite stories. I wrap my red woolen scarf around my head to protect my hair, rest my cheek against the goat, and close my eyes. A tear squeezes its way out from between my eyelids and dribbles down my face. Silly, I say, licking it off my cheek as it slides near to my mouth. I will not feel sorry for myself. I will be a brave girl, I whisper into the goat's kidneys. I will make Mama proud of me. And then I fall asleep. My grandmother meets me at the harbor at Svanica. We have never met before, but I know it is her because she is the only woman there. She is short and round like a barrel. Everything she wears is black. Her headscarf, dress, boots, and shawl. Even her eyes are black, like two raisins pressed into her wrinkled gray face. She does not smile. I wonder if her bloomers are black. Gloomy underwear would be enough to wipe the joy from anyone's face. She waits on solid ground and makes me walk alone down the gangplank and the full length of the long stone wharf. I have traveled all this way on my own, and still she makes me complete the final part of the journey alone. I feel naked and lopsided, and when I reach her, I realize why. Grandmother gasps. What have you done to your hair, child? I touch my head and feel spiky tufts where one of my long blonde plates used to sit. The goat has eaten all the hair off one side of my head while I was asleep. I can feel hot tears prickling in my eyes, but I will not let them fall. I will not feel sorry for myself no matter how bald the right side of my head feels, no matter how much I wish my mother were here, no matter how long it takes before my grandmother hugs me and says that she is glad to meet me. <laughs>